Impact frames are something we see a lot of in modern TV and especially in anime. A friend of mine sent me an edit that he wanted me to look at the other day. So he asked me, how would I put something like this into one of my videos? How do I make that effect? And so for fun, I decided to go ahead and actually see how you would go about creating something like this in DaVinci Resolve. Let's check it out. When I made this effect, I actually went and looked at a couple different anime scenes for reference to see exactly how things like this are made. What I found was actually quite interesting. It's really cool how some of this is done. For this first one, we have an outline of our swordsman with his kind of character color, his character theme color. Then we invert that and we've got what would be some kind of particle and speed lines that turns into an explosion, which then turns into a whirlwind, which creates a massive version of him. Then that fizzles out into kind of like, kind of like the energy is dissipating. And I guess all that gets condensed back down right back into him. And now we've got some flames here. Really, really cool stuff. And this next one is of another character and he's walking and we get this really cool sequence of lightning, then kind of this uh, black on white flame effect, some more lightning, some other effects, really, really cool stuff. And then he just continues. There's another one where he jumps and you have kind of a white on black effect with all these speed lines and then it inverts and it goes to black on white with the speed lines cutting through the black the entire time. And so to actually create um, impact frames in the correct spot, you need to take footage where there is some kind of release of energy, whether your character is doing something with their aura, whether they're throwing something, hitting something, jumping off of something, hitting someone. This is footage of me pretending to throw an imaginary ball. So we have the wind up and throw. And something to keep in mind when you're doing this to really sell the effect is to speed ramp your clip. So what I'll do is we'll show the original clip and then I'll show the speed ramped version. Then we'll do a side by side comparison so you guys can see how they stack up against each other. So with our speed ramped version, what you can see is that we're actually slowing down the wind up for the pitch. You know, and if we're in a TV show, what that's doing is that's giving us more time to charge up our energy. And then we're bringing our clip back up from 50% speed to 100% speed right as we enter into the throw. And so because we have a steeper transition from slower to faster movement, that's giving the illusion of more power, which then we can emphasize with our impact frames. I really liked the idea of creating this larger, powerful version of yourself with your aura. And so this is something I incorporated in as well as the lightning from this scene. That was really cool. And the inverted speed lines from this last jump scene. So these are three elements that we were able to fit into our own impact frames effect. And I'm going to show you what those frames are right now. So we're starting off right here at the moment that we're about to speed up the throw. And the thing with impact frames is they kind of they kind of take a little slice of that moment and they expand it out so you can see the power. So we actually end up expanding this moment by maybe five or six frames. So when you're making impact frames yourself, what you might want to do is take the moment that you have and spread it out by changing the speed of just that moment down to maybe 50%. And that's what you're going to use for your impact frames. On our first frame here, you can see we have our white on black silhouette and we've got some lightning around our character. The next frame, we have a single red bolt of lightning followed by two more red bolts on either side. And now we have a black silhouette again with our lightning around the character. This gets followed by then a black on white silhouette as opposed to the white on black or just the black with lightning. 
We then resize up our black and red from before, change the background now to white, and then we keep just these last two lightning bolts and then size back down with our white on black and our lightning again. And so those are our impact frames. Let's actually jump into how we make these. First things first, I knew I was going to need to create some kind of speed line effect and everything needed to be randomized. I couldn't have it looking uniform in any way possible. And the way that we're going to do that is with particles. Now, most people don't think to do a lot of stuff with particles because people think that particles are for making smoke or maybe for making like some embers or maybe fluid simulations. Truth is you can use particles for so much more than just that. So what we did is we took a background, created an ellipse, and we just stretched it way, way out. You can see it goes actually past the bounds of our canvas here. And the reason that we're doing this is because this ellipse is going to act as our speed line. Then what I did is I plugged that into our particle emitter here. And if I get rid of my transform node, you can see that they kind of start bending really weirdly. And I still haven't figured out why they were doing that. But I do know that when I add in my transform node and adjust my angle, I can actually get them all kind of pointing at the center of the sphere that they're coming out from. And for the region, I actually brought the sphere down all the way because I wanted them all to be coming from the same point. Something else that we did is we added a friction boundary. The reason we added a friction boundary is because if you look at the impact frames in the references, even though there's a silhouette, there's a lot more density of those speed lines around the silhouette. And so the plan is to have the particles moving away from the spawn point or from the emission point, um, but for them to all get caught at the center first before they flood out, creating this effect here where you end up with a lot more in the center than you do out here. So when you have all that rendered out, that looks good. We took a time stretcher so that we could pick the exact frame that we wanted everything on. So when I play this all the way through, Right, this all stays the same. I now have my frozen frame or my still that I can work with. So when I punch my media two in, boom, this is what I end up with. So what I'm doing is I'm using my particles as a mask and I'm, and I'm saying, hey, take the silhouette cutout of my guy that I made and only show the lines that fit within this cutout. Then I merge the particles on top of our silhouette and this is what we end up getting. Now, to keep in mind, our silhouette is solid except for the border. So to recreate that, I basically just grabbed all the same stuff here, but instead of merging it over top of itself, because if I have the full silhouette on top, that's going to get rid of any kind of jagged border we could have completely. We took this and we put an erode dilate. Actually, we put two erode dilate nodes to basically bring the edges of that media down. And that gives us this over this. After that, we throw a background underneath. And just for some extra touch, you can see on the edges of our reference, we have a little bit of blurriness. So we throw a zoom blur. <laughs> And then we throw a prism blur as well, because there's also a little bit of that delicious chromatic aberration. And there we have our first silhouette. Now for the black on white, it was more or less the same, right? We had our background with our ellipse, we had our transform, we had our P emitter, our P friction, our P render. But instead, this time we wanted everything to be black. So that's exactly what we did. We have our mask, we have our silhouette, we threw a white background underneath it instead of a black one. And then the same thing with the zoom blur, the prism blur, the slight change in hue. There's our black on white, same thing, just inverted. So now we have both of these working together. For this silhouette right here, all I had to do was take the actual silhouette of the black background and then include it just without the particles. 
And the next thing I'm going to show you is how we made the lightning around the character silhouette. Now this is really, really easy. All you have to do is basically grab the edges of whatever object you want. And then once you have the edges, you're going to take the edges and you're going to kind of crumple them a little bit, add a glow on them, which is exactly what we did here. We got our media. We threw a time speed on it to keep it at the frame we wanted. Then I threw a color corrector and an edge detect on it as well. So now we actually have a black silhouette. Now I took my color data and I fed that into a displace with a fast noise. And this is what allowed me to make it kind of all crumply, wibbly wobbly like this, which by the way, fast noise is an incredible, incredible node. This is probably one of the most versatile nodes you're ever going to use inside of Resolve. And I look forward to making a video on this one for you guys. This one's this one's going to be a big one. And hey, if you're enjoying the value so far, then remember to subscribe, leave a like on the video, comment, let me know what you want to learn next. If you want to see breakdowns of other stuff and what else you would like to learn about DaVinci Resolve. After our displace, we plug that into an edge detect. We change it from RGB to grayscale and I just brought the color up to red. Adjusted the settings a little bit to get something that I liked. And I did not want any of the black in here. I wanted just the lightning. So we plug that into a Luma here. Just kind of pull the high end down so that we can get only the lightning. Throw a soft glow on that and merge that over our silhouette. And that is how we get the lightning on top of our silhouette. Creating the rest of our lightning was just as straightforward. What you're going to see here is a polygon, another polygon, and one more polygon. And what we've done with these is we've just given them red backgrounds to use as masks. And these are radial gradients. So red starts at the center and black is on the other side. And I just kind of pull them out to get a nice difference going from here to here. After that, it is the exact same process with the displace and fast noise. Then we throw a soft glow on them and then rinse and repeat two more times, adjusting our settings just a little bit. Put one more soft glow on that and there's our lightning. Easy peasy. Now, after we have all of these different pieces built, that's when we can start putting them together to create our impact frames effect. And hey, if you're enjoying the video, if you're getting some value, you're enjoying seeing what's kind of under the hood of a lot of these effects, seeing how the process works for making them, then click the link below and join the Discord. There you'll be able to access all kinds of useful and incredible tools, things like the project files from videos like this one, which if you're viewing this, the project files are actually available inside the Discord. You can also find news on promotions, presets, and giveaways that I do inside the Discord. We actually released two free presets, one that allows you to create your own custom lethal company screen, and another one that is a one-to-one -one recreation of the Disney Plus logo. If you like free stuff, if you like cool stuff, if you want to join a growing community of awesome people learning Resolve and having a blast while doing it, then do yourself a favor, join. Anyways, let's uh, let's take a look at our building blocks here. So the effect that I was going for here was kind of the same one we saw where we kind of have this effect that grows, this energy that grows over time before it goes back down into him and, you know, he finishes his action. So we did that with our white on black silhouette with our speed lines. Then we threw the lightning overlay on top of there. We then cut to the single bolt of lightning. After that, we have all three bolts. And so that is split across these two clips here on the top and bottom. Then we have our lightning overlaying on top of our black eroded silhouette. After that, we have our black on white silhouette. Then the same four clips as before, but we've now sized up our lightning and our silhouette. We then replace our background with white get rid of the first bolt of lightning and then shrink everything back down going to our first frame here and boom 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 just like that you have yourself 
some impact frames. Really, really cool stuff. All that was left was to sound design it. And everyone knows that sound design is a huge thing. So of course we have a ton of different sound effects here that actually made up the sound that you heard here in the effect. That's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something. This gave you a little bit of insight about how different effects are made. And now you're feeling more confident than ever. And you're ready to jump into Resolve and make some really cool shit. This has been a Fusion Effects Breakdown, and I'll see you in the next video.